Every day is a what day. In the physical, when you eat today, there is energy for the day. But if you are waiting for one week, from Sunday to next Sunday, before you eat, you discover that by the time you get there, day by day, there is a depletion. It is not that you have never eaten before, but the food you ate, it is a long time. The energy has been spent. If you are not careful after a while, you won't be seeing well again. You won't be hearing well again. You won't be walking well again. You won't be moving well again. If you sleep, you won't be sleeping well again. Why? Because the nourishment required in order to sustain the functionality of the body is not there. Hear this. The word of God is the nourishment required to sustain the functionality of your faith. That's why a person can speak words and even they know that what they are saying will not work because the, 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 the energy required, the nourishment required to sustain the functionality of their faith is not there. So the words that are being spoken are empty words. But when your spirit man remains charged, when you talk, even in a low tone, Satan can hear it. He knows, yes, this one is fired. So when your faith is charged by the word of God, you remain in sustainable command. Now, very quickly this morning, we are going to look at characteristics of the spirit of faith. Number one, it believes the unbelievable, thereby doing the impossible. Acts chapter 24 and verse 14. Look at what the Bible says. It said, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things that were written in the law and in the prophets, believing all things. So the spirit of faith believes they all be the things people cannot believe. The spirit of faith believes it. God's servant said, years ago he was right before the Lord and came across the word of God in a particular book of the scripture. He said, the Lord said, he will bless you above all. He said, and you will lend to many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And he said the word but jumped out. But thou shalt not borrow. And from there he wrote a covenant. Even if it means wearing the same shoes for four years, I will not beg or borrow. Even if it means going without food for days, I will not beg or borrow. Now, the natural man will look at it and say, well, I understand that this is what the Bible says, but let's look at it practically. Even countries borrow. Even the United States, the strongest nation in the world, is borrowing. China, borrowing. United Kingdom, borrowing. All of them, with all the noise they are making, they are borrowing. Let me, as a human being, I will line up on. But you see, when the spirit of faith is inside the person, what others struggle to believe? You believe it without shaking. Is somebody getting it? You believe it without shaking. You say, oh, in this industry where my business is, hey, this industry requires a lot of funds. Oh, there's no way to do this thing without them. But the Bible says, but thou shalt not borrow. You see, many times when the spirit of faith is not there, even the things you see in the Bible, you will be pretending like you didn't see it. You say, but you shall not borrow. Okay, let's go to the next verse. What's the next verse? <laughs> you, you start pretending that you didn't know that it is there. You'll be skipping over portions of the scripture because the thing looks too unbelievable to you. But when faith, the spirit of faith is in you, your, your thinking is different. Now, look at what the Bible says. I saw this some years ago and it, it just fired my spirit up. Acts chapter 26 and verse 8. Look at it. I love this scripture. It said, why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Why should it be? Why is this surprising? Why is the, why is the raising of the dead? Why is, it, why is it a big deal to you? Why should it be taught a thing incredible to you? That's Paul speaking. Why? Because his mind has been renovated. 
He was not thinking like an ordinary man again. The spirit of faith had made him believe anything that God said. Shout hallelujah. From this day onward, I see that spirit of faith entering into you and I. Number two, it speaks the unspeakable. It speaks the unspeakable. It said, we have in the same spirit of faith. We have believed, therefore, we have spoken. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. So, when you see a man or woman that is carrying the spirit of faith, the things they say, they are audacious. That is, there are things that they say that can make people fear for them. People become afraid on their behalf. You see it in the life of God's servant and father. Sometimes he speaks, and as he's speaking, people who are hearing him are shaking. They are afraid. Not that something will happen to them, they are afraid on his behalf. Hey, how can someone say, how can someone talk like that? How can someone, hey, and some will start praying, even on their seat. Father, help Papa. Father, help Papa. This thing is too big. This thing is too big. Why? The spirit of faith, it speaks the things others cannot speak. If I put it this way, it even speaks the things others cannot think. They can't think it, but somebody else is speaking it. You hear him say, one billion devils cannot stand on my way. And then somebody else is saying, hey, there's, one, there's one strong man in my town. The, that man is very strong. He's very, don't mention his name. Because if you talk, they will hear. And somebody else is saying, one billion devils cannot stand in my way. Why? The spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Again, I pray this morning that for each one of us, there will be a fresh endowment of the spirit of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 20, he said, it is the spirit of your father that speaketh in you. So this is, you, you start releasing things without consideration. He said, the Lord spoke to him right as he was getting ready to enter into that service, the breakthrough seminar on a Saturday morning. He said, it's time to get the air aircraft. And he got on the altar and said, well, it's time to get the aircraft. If you give, you give according to what you have, not according to what you have not. Just said it casually like that. And then gathered the people. What kind of aircraft? I don't know. Didn't know anything about it. There was no consideration. The spirit of faith was just speaking expressly through him. He climbed the altar and the Lord said to him, our father, he climbed the altar and the Lord said to him, he said, September 18, 1999, the tabernacle shall be dedicated. The tabernacle whose design is not completed. Where they have not even figured out how the, the kind of roof that can sit on that kind of structure. What was completed is foundation design. And this statement is being made September 17, 1998. One year to the date. But the spirit of faith spoke it without consideration. For somebody here today, whatever has tied your mouth from being able to speak by the spirit of faith, it is loosed. Yeah.